<clears throat> the glory of Jesus, the glory and worthiness of God. Revelations 5.11 Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth, wisdom, strength, honour, glory and praise. Philippians 2.9 Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him a name that is above every name. So why should Jesus, the Lamb of God, have such an acclamation of worthy as a lamb in high and exalted? Well, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the everlasting Saviour, the Creator <clears throat> of all time and space, the one who loves us above all understanding, depth and wonder, the one who is all wisdom and knowledge, power, worth, greatness and royalty, Jesus Christ, the one depicted by the Queen of Sheba concerning the King of Solomon, I have heard of your greatness, but when I came I just couldn't believe what I saw. This is the worthy one, the glorious Son of God, the one who is high and lifted up, the one who is so powerful, so loving, so wise, so just, so intensely pure and clothed in very light itself. This is the one who calls us his children. This is our Jesus, and he is the one who is worthy of such praise. Let's try and understand him a little bit more. <clears throat> Jesus is so exalted that he alone could have a throne set in the very centre of the beautiful Orion Nebulae, a gas cluster in the universe that is 25 light years wide, or in other words, 137 trillion miles wide. That's how big that, that particular uh, <clears throat> nebula is. And he is so mighty and so powerful and so worthy. He could have his throne put there amongst all that wonder and beauty. He is so pure, so worthy, so majestic, so loving, that he alone shines forth his brightness in, a terif in terrifying wonder. He is so pure, so worthy, that his brightness penetrates every part of eternity, time and space. There is nowhere in heaven, nowhere in the heavens, nor in the vast distant galaxy where his light does not reach. He is so worthy that his light penetrates every object. There is no darkness at all. <clears throat> Just as radio waves penetrate a dark place and allow us to call, so does light of Jesus. It penetrates everywhere and everything. Such is the intensity, glory and brightness of the Son of God. Worthy is the Lamb. In heaven the streets were of transparent gold because his light shone and permeated everything in all time and space. The glorious, gracious, loving Lamb of God is worthy. Because not only do we have some idea of his glory and worthiness as King, we also know that he is this great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who allowed himself to be crucified and to bleed to death for us, bleed to death for me. The glorious, worthy Son of God gave up all this wonder for a a while to allow me to be saved and who am I O oh Lord that you should do that for me I could say my friend we sing songs of praise to God for saving us but how little we may know of the true staggering glory of the Son of God the utter glory of the King of Kings when we begin to look at Jesus Christ and see how time and space are made for him when we see that he could set a throne within Orion's nebulae and fill the whole area with his radiant glory, even 137 trillion miles across and beyond, then we begin to see a little of the utter wonder and greatness and royalty and kingdom that he commands. Yet he died for me. And that's the wonder. He died for me. He gave all that intense and mind-blowing glory up for 33 years on this earth to save me to save you us who had no concern for him whatsoever until the day he called me and you and enabled us to believe <clears throat> this is he is 
so worthy, so great, so highly exalted and lifted up, that it makes me feel unworthy to even ask anything from him. Surely he is too high, too far in royalty and high kingship, maintaining the order of the universe and all the goings on with mankind to want to bother with me. Yet, a wonder it may seem, he wants to hear my prayers, he wants to hear your prayers, your cry. He wants to hear our worship and appreciation. He loves and cares about us. He makes time for us, for me. Can I take this in? The glory, the wonder of this one, who people cry, worthy is the Lamb, crown him with many crowns. This awesome king, who by human right, I could be and should be terrified of, to be anywhere near, <clears throat> yet he says, I love you, come and share my glory. This is a one who in human terms would be the richest, most powerful, yet most kind, most respected man who drove um, along the highway in his most powerful car and lived in a palace costing billions and saw me and pulls me up and says, come up, citizen, I want to share all my glory with you. Jesus Christ, the one who cannot be expressed by human language, says to each of us, I am all that you describe and more, and I love you. And I want to share it all with you. Oh, of a truth, what, a, what is man that you are mindful of him? The darling of heaven is crucified so that we may share his glory. The thoughts of this section came to me <clears throat> at two o'clock in the morning after four days of a nasty flu virus and night times of coughs and sweating, I was listening to the Worthy is the Lamb by Hillsong. And it was the words, Worthy is the Lamb, that filled me with many thoughts and made me realise how insignificant was my illness compared to the glory of Jesus. So part one of this, sharing God, the glory of Jesus, Romans eight seventeen. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs with God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may share in his glory. The most amazing thing is that God of time and space, the mighty ruler, the loving God and saviour who died for me, wants to share his glory. All that the Lord Jesus Christ is, in his splendour, awesome power does not prevent the Lord of time and space wanting to share his glory with us. The most obvious thing concerning God's glory is the intense light that emanates from his very being. Our Saviour is the most purest and brightest of anyone and anything in time and space and eternity. His light is so intense as I've said that it shines throughout all time and space, through everything and in everything. His light is glory. And it reveals everything so that nothing can be hidden. Everything is illuminated by God's glory. So sharing in God's glory on earth. Even on this earth we're able to partake and share in God's glory. Albeit in a much smaller way. Moses is our classic example of sharing in God's glory. Or being soaked by a mere mortal. Moses was a godly man <clears throat> who spent 40 days and nights in the mountain with God. And when he came back down to the camp, his face glowed with a small measure of God's glory. It could be likened to luminous paint, I suppose, that was introduced to the sun for a period of time. Like, um, like the sunshine, we absorb, we absorb it, but like, um, what do you call it, luminous paint. Without the sun, it eventually goes dull. But if you, if you put luminous paint <coughs> um, against the sun, just for a few moments, it absorbs all that light. And when you put it in the dark again, it shines for, you know, for a few minutes or whatever afterwards. And it's like that with us, or like that with Moses, certainly. He spent so much time with God that he absorbed the glory of God, just like the paint absorbs the glory of the sun. And too much sunlight or too close to the sun would simply destroy the paint. <clears throat> and likewise, Moses <clears throat> uh, was permitted by God, by God just to see a little bit of him. 
and just absorb enough of his glory so that man could see that Moses had been with God. Moses could not look upon God in his full glory, and it says, but you may look not directly at me, or at my face rather, no one can see me and live. And God hid Moses within a gap in a rock, so that he could not accidentally look at God's face. The face of God's glory, the wonderful, awesome brightness, greater than the sun, would have destroyed Moses as a mere mortal man. <clears throat> in the New Testament, Jesus, while he was in the Mount of Transfiguration, allowed himself to, to glow radiantly with his glory, just enough for the disciples, so they could see his glory and share in it with their Saviour. And we read that his visage, his, his being became whiter than anything that ever been seen on earth. And I think our beloved Saviour really longed to share that glory with his disciples. <clears throat> it must be hard to imagine that our dearest Lord Jesus for 33 years kept that glory hidden away. Such radiance displayed since eternity past. I do firmly believe that as we live lives more pure and more holy, that people will see something of God's glory in our lives, and people will take note and say, that person has been with Jesus. Stephen, when he was martyred, said, they said of him that he, he looked like an angel. In other words, he reflected <clears throat> God's glory. His lifestyle was so godly that it sort of looked like an angel, the way he looked. I once had a dream a long time ago, and as I looked at my hands, they were glowing bright white. And I don't know what it, exactly what it meant, <laughs> just a random dream. But, you know, I, I'm sure it was just like a, a Lord showing me a glimpse of what glory looks like on a human being. Um, but it's, it's just something in passing. <clears throat> in 2 Thessalonians 2.14, he called us. Or we called you to this through our gospel, that you might share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. And as I said, Peter, James and John saw the glory of God in the cloud and the Mount of Transfiguration. <clears throat> he glowed whiter than any other, or any other white that could be matched on earth. Paul saw the glory of God. In fact, he saw it so intensely, the glory of Jesus, that he was blinded. And the Lord Jesus wants to share this glory, but... For us on earth, it is a deeper knowledge and understanding of all that he is, a new revelation of his holiness, his mighty, awesome kingdom and kingship. And this will have effect upon us and people who say that person has been with Jesus. We may not see it, but others will. The word does not say I will not give my glory to another, Isaiah 42.8. According to God's word, he will not give his glory to anyone else. Yet we are able to experience his glory and delight in the wonder of it. The moon, for example, shines most brightly at night when, the, when it is full, directly above us. The moon has no glory of its own. It simply receives it from the sun. The moon simply is reflecting the glory of the intense sun. The moon is just dust and rock. Yet with the sun shining upon it, and being that the dust is very light coloured, it is able to shine so very brightly and reflect it. And just as the moon shines brightly, re reflecting the sun's glory, so we too can shine bright for our Lord simply by reflecting his glory. In heaven we shall be in his presence, in the presence of his glory, glory of God, in its tent bright, tense brightness. We will, unlike the moon, not only reflect his glory, but absorb his glory and shine radiantly like our saviour. And as we know, Moses absorbed <clears throat> God's glory and his face shone. I suppose a luminous sort of glow for many days. So sharing in God's glory in heaven for eternity. In heaven, we will have new bodies. Bodies are able to enjoy and endure the wonder of God's glory and fullness. We already have read about Moses, and as much as he could only look on his back, not the front, because he wouldn't live. <clears throat> the glory of God for us on earth was simply to destroy our mortal bodies. But Philippians 3.21 says that he will transform our lowly bodies until we like his glorious body, by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. 
So when our bodies are transformed in heaven into a body like his glorious body, then we will be able to see Jesus face to face and take in all the wonder of it. And our bodies will radiate the wonderful brightness and glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we will be like the angels who constantly wait upon God and share also in his glory. And it is a great delight to share his wonder and splendor and glory. Solomon took delight in sharing the glory of his kingdom with his dignitaries who came to visit him. How much more will we delight in sharing the glory of our Saviour? I hope this sort of message encourages you because it greatly encouraged me.